Hi, welcome to the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench, Episode 5. My name is John Brunswick, and today we're going to be creating an image gallery inside Web Center. We're going to do this using something called Content Presenter that lets us take advantage of the rich content capabilities at Oracle, specifically digital asset management. This means that when people are contributing image files into the system, it's going to create thumbnails for each of those images. This means that in our Content Presenter template, we can take advantage of the thumbnails as well as title and comment information stored in the content system. Additionally, we're going to be using something called FancyBox, which uses jQuery and CSS to display the beautiful gallery inside of Web Center. All an end user has to do is select a handful of items or provide a query that returns a series of items that are images that we're going to display. With that being said, let's take a look at the code and see how it all works. To gain a sense of context to understand the code, let's take a look at the solution in action. I'm going to navigate over to a page in Web Center where we're using the gallery. And as I mouse over the items in the gallery, you'll notice that a nice descriptive alt tag is going to pop up next to the image. And for some of the items where we've added content uh, information for a comment in Content Server, we're actually going to get some nice long descriptions. If I actually click on the image item itself, it's going to bring up a modal dialog that not only has the image, but again has the descriptive text down at the bottom, and it indicates what image number it is inside the collection. As I mouse over the edges of the image, I'm actually able to navigate across the various images, and if an image didn't have a comment field filled out with a description, it's just going to default to the document title. So shown at the bottom there, ph, hyphen, ind, etc., that's just using the actual content title. Flip through a couple more, and then we're able to close out the modal dialog when we're done looking at the images. So it's as easy as that from an end user standpoint. And real quickly, let's take a look behind the scenes at how it's actually grabbing the content. I'm going to log in, and when I enter Composer for that particular page, what you'll notice is the gallery comes up in the Composer view. And when we go to Content Presenter's options, you'll notice that we've selected a series of items manually for inclusion in the gallery, and we can actually move the items up and down inside this list to change their position in the gallery. Additionally, we could run any of these other selection um, types to pull together the images for use in the gallery. So it's a very powerful mechanism that uses the selection capabilities afforded to us by Content Presenter. Now, to make the gallery look the way it does, we're not only using Content Presenter, but we're using a third-party tool called FancyBox. FancyBox is a very nice library that's built on top of jQuery and uses a variety of CSS and some imagery to give us some great examples of what we can do when we include imagery um, with these technologies. So fancybox.net is a nice place to go if you want to take a look at some options for how you could display the gallery a little bit differently than we've defaulted to. So let's minimize the browser and actually take a look at the code that's powering our solution. If I open up my text editor, you'll notice that it's a single page. And within this single page, this is a JSPX page, this page has a couple areas. At the top, we have our standard references to the various libraries that we'll be leveraging within the page. So you'll notice that we're doing the kind of standard ADF items here, but taking it a step further where we're actually pulling in some um, prefixes here that are referencing Web Center specific capabilities, letting us get to information about the content items we're surfacing. Just below that, there are a series of um, ADF resource callouts, and so we're loading up JavaScript and cascading style sheets, all from external files which are residing within our content server. Scrolling down a little bit further, you'll see quite a bit of inline CSS, and we're just doing that for the simplicity of demonstration. You can always externalize that. Coming down a bit further, we have a verbatim block, and what the verbatim block does, it allows us to use 
as um, absolutely standard markup inside the body of our dynamic page. And by that, if we do have particular functions we want to place at particular stages within the page, the verbatim tag lets us do that. So here, we're actually using a jQuery call that will go ahead and associate all of the various images with fancy box once the document is loaded up. So the dollar sign document dot ready function, that's a jQuery function that will go ahead then and execute this um, action on the different image objects within the page that are of the class grouped elements. We'll go through that in a moment. So as we scroll down a bit further, this is where it gets uh, Web Center specific. You're going to see an area here which is DT content list template def. And from this, we're getting a variable called nodes. This is where the magic happens with Content Presenter. Once we have a nodes object, we can iterate across it and pull out various attributes from the nodes object. And that's exactly what we proceed to do over the next couple lines. So between 83 and 88, that's some just native functionality that we pulled from a default template that we copied to create this. But our template really starts functioning when we go through lines 89 to 93. This iterator here, this AF iterator, is actually going to go through the nodes object and through each iteration is going to render a, um, a anchor tag, and within the anchor tag, we're going to have all of our image information. And so this AF output text capability allows us to write standard markup um, using the, the value attribute of this tag. And in this case, what you're seeing here in the value area is that we're escaping a less than sign, and we're escaping our quotes here, we're HTML encoding them, and the title area is where we're actually starting to place the image names that are coming back from content server that were selected in the list previously. So what we're doing here is we're checking and seeing that, and we're saying if a comment does not exist on a particular image, go ahead and just use the document title as the image description. If it does exist, go ahead and ultimately use that comments uh, information from content server to provide a description for the image. The last portion here, the actual href that is used um, that calls out to the image, what we're doing, we're going ahead and just directly grabbing it from our content server using the publicly available URL. For the actual thumbnail itself, we're going to use the dynamic capabilities from Content Server where when we request the file, we do a couple things here with the URL that are a little bit different than the call we made above. First of all, we're actually calling an IDC service, so you can see we're calling the service get file. And within that get file call, we're specifying a couple things, the doc name, the doc ID, but then we're going ahead and actually requesting that the rendition is a thumbnail. And that's a great way for us to get, again, the benefits of the auto generation coming from Content Server to help create our gallery. Toward the end of the page, we just close everything out. And that's it as far as our loop. You know, we're generating an anchor tag. On the inside of the anchor tag, we actually have that thumbnail. Um, the anchor tag itself is going to hold a reference in the href to the fully sized image. Now, how do we get this inside a content presenter template? We're going to use Oracle's JDeveloper and we're going to go ahead and create a new application. We're going to create a Web Center portal application. We're going to call this the E2 Workbench Content Presenter Sample. We'll go ahead and hit finish. And as the system starts up here, what we're going to have an opportunity to do is within one of the nodes that is provided to us by the Web Center Portal application, we can create a Java server faces fragment. That fragment is where we ultimately place the code that we were just looking at, and then we're able to create a portal item from it. After we create a portal item, we can actually export that out of JDeveloper and import it directly into Web Center using the Web Center UI. So the really nice part about this is that if you had a large, complicated project, 
you would be able to house all of your templates and other items that you're dealing with Web Center inside your JDeveloper project to give yourself a structured environment to work with these assets. Now that our project is loaded up, you can see the familiar tree structure on the left hand side of the screen if you've been using Web Center Portal. And within that tree structure, you see an area called Pages on the left hand side of the screen. Within Pages, let's go ahead and create a new folder. And we're going to call this new folder our CP Templates folder. And within the CP Templates folder, let's go ahead and create a Java Server Faces fragment. And for this particular fragment, let's call this Photo Gallery. We can accept the defaults. And for the sake of brevity, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the source view. And I'll include a link to the full, um, the full online walkthrough in the notes for this episode. But we're going to go to the source view, and here we're just going to remove what's existing and copy the code that's available with this podcast. When we paste it into our template, let's go ahead and save the template. And then we're going to right click on it on the left hand side of the screen and select Create Portal Resource. It's going to bring up a screen here where there are a couple uh, options that are perhaps new to us. One being the display name. This is actually what's going to show in Web Center's content presenter list when we're um, working with our content presenter items. And we have an opportunity to specify a particular category to be associated with it. So as people are going through and using the Content Presenter Wizard, you might want to have different areas for them to pull templates from. You could set that here. For our purposes, we're just going to accept the defaults. The only item that we're going to add here is the view ID. We're going to call this Photo Gallery. This is just a unique identifier that we would use with our template. We'll hit OK. We'll go ahead and right click the photo gallery again and what we're going to do, let me make sure that uh, I can actually click on it. We're going to go ahead and select export portal resource. We're going to export this to our desktop and we're going to call it the E2 workbench Oops. ear file. So anytime you're working with exporting from the system, it's actually going to be exported as an ear file. When we hit OK, the system is going to take a moment, and if we go ahead and look at our desktop, we should have the Enterprise uh, 2.0 Workbench ear file. Coming back into Web Center, if we go into Administration, and in Administration go to Resources, and then go to Content Presenter, we can actually use the Upload button here to upload the content presenter item that we just created. Select it and upload it directly through the web interface. And after we've done this, this will be available to us as a content presenter item to actually select when we are creating galleries within Web Center.